If you are a family making less than $250,000 a year, you will not see your taxes go up. You will not see one dime's worth of tax increase. Any form of tax increase. Question, didn't the president break that promise? Well, Chris, I, you know, if you go back and you look at the laws that have been enacted since the president's taken off in we, office, we have cut taxes for those families. We have reduced their taxes. But, but according to the, the Supreme the Court, only this is going to raise taxes will, for those no, families. No, that's, that's not what the Supreme Court said. What the Supreme Court said was this was constitutional. They said it didn't matter what Congress called it. It is a penalty no, no, for no, the they 1%. No, wait, a, wait a minute, sir. It is a penalty I their for the 1% who choose they, not to buy insurance. Mr. Liu, they call it a tax. No, actually, technically what they said is the Congress has many powers. There's a Commerce Clause, there's taxing powers, and it was constitutional. No, That's no, what they said. No, wait, they wait, said it doesn't matter wait, wait, what you call I can't it. Wait, wait, I can't let you go there. It specifically said that it is not constitutional under the Commerce Clause. They said no. it is constitutional under the tax. And as to the question about raising taxes for the middle class, if I may, sir, let's just look at the record. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office estimates that in 2016, 4 million Americans will pay the mandate penalty or tax. 75% of those people will make less than $120,000 a year. And the CBO says between 2012 and 2021, those folks will pay $27 billion in additional taxes. So, Chris, the same the, if, if, if I may just finish my question, and then I'll, I, I promise I'll let you talk. The middle class is taking quite a hit by what yeah. the Supreme Court said is a tax. Yeah, th I, I think if you look at all of the laws enacted in the last three and a half years, you would see that those families have a tax cut. That, say, that all the independent analysts, whether it's the Congressional Budget Office or others, would validate that there has been a tax cut for I, middle class I'm not class arguing families. that. I'm, all I'm saying is that this is a tax increase on the middle class of $27 billion over the next 10 years. N no, what this is, this, this is a law that says if you can afford insurance and you choose not to buy it, and you choose to have your health costs be a burden to others, you'll pay a penalty so that you'll pay your fair share. That's what this law says. For the 99% of the people who buy insurance or who get it through you know, the, the, the tax cuts that are in this act, th they're not going to be affected. You keep your insurance, you don't pay any kind of penalty. For the very few people who decide to be free riders and not have insurance but still have their costs go into the system so the rest of us pay it, there's a penalty. It is, it is not a burden on the middle class. Well, uh, again, the, the nonpartisan CBO says 4 million Americans will be paying that tax uh, by 2016. And let's look at why Chief Justice Roberts called it a tax. Uh, it will be collected and enforced by the Internal Revenue Service. What you pay is calculated as a percentage of your income. And, and here's what the uh, president's lawyer, the Solicitor General Donald Verrilli, told the court in defending the mandate. Not only is it fair to read this as an exercise of the tax power, but th this court has got an obligation to construe it as an exercise of the tax power if it can be upheld on that basis. Well, why Mr. Liu, if it walks, looks, and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Well, you know, uh, Chris, uh, it's been a long time since I've practiced law, but I know one of the things about our judicial system is that you can make arguments to the court on multiple grounds. That's what Don was doing. He was saying there are a lot of ways to look at this. It was set up and it was not called a tax. 